and hello and happy, happy Wednesday. Let's get this party started today. I'm seeing lots and lots of gals already on the YouTube channel commenting. There's somebody from Alberta, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Ohio. Welcome everybody. Thanks so much for dropping in and spending some time with me uh, this particular Wednesday. If we haven't met before, my name is Noreen Smith. I am the Product Development Creative Manager at Creative Memories. And each and every Wednesday, I get to be with you, spend some time with you, and do some fast and fun projects. And we've got lots of good stuff ready for you today. Hello, everybody. Now we've got the Facebook gals joining us as well. Oregon, Florida, hello, hello, Colorado, Maryland, Connecticut. There's someone joining us from Mel Melbourne, Australia, um, Yukon. Hello, um, Vancouver Island. Hello, happy Wednesday, Central Florida. Butte, Montana, just south of me here, uh, just south of me in Alberta. Another one from Florida, Ohio. Hello, and someone's mentioning that it's been warming up in BC. I'm wondering if that's my friend Krista or perhaps it might be Ashley, who knows. Thanks everybody for joining me. I really appreciate it. And of course, I'm always so happy to have my scrappy friends stop by and hang out with me on Wednesdays. Uh, it definitely is warming up here in Calgary. We had a 22 degree temperature swing yesterday. Went from the minus teens into the plus, single plus positives. So that was a great, uh, a great thing. But of course, a lot of us suffer from Chinook headaches, which is when we have that big temperature shift, uh, it, it changes the pressure. So I know some folks out there, are, you know, are suffering from the weather changes. So hopefully you are okay. I'm okay today. So let's get started. Um, we are going to talk about DIY today. And, you know, I think after the holidays, a lot of us kind of focus on our homes again. You know, we were, of course, putting up lots and lots of decorations for the holidays uh, even if you keep, keep it simple, you know, you probably had a few little touches. And then once we take all of that holiday stuff down, it feels just nice and clean and kind of like a fresh start. And I know lots of us after the holidays and looking at the beginning of the year, think about some of our home renovation plans and, you know, um, freshening things up, decorating. Maybe there's a big renovation plan. Maybe you're building something for your home. Maybe you're doing, going to do some work in your yard or on the outside of your house. And those kind of things I think are natural to think about in this time of the year. But it's also a great time to talk about them because of course I have my mind on the new riveting collection that Creative Memories launched just last week. We didn't really have a chance to talk about it last week because we were focusing on the tools, uh, the organizational tools and tweaking our systems. So we didn't really talk about riveting, but it's a brand new collection. I want to show it to you really quickly. And then I want to talk about DIYing because I think there's a lot of similarities between, you know, home renovations and improvements and kind of that construction feeling and scrapbooking, right? We talk about creating or constructing or building a scrapbook page. We, you know, make our plans and I've even seen, you know, some sketches or scrapbook plans called blueprints. So there's another connection. We use a lot of different tools. Uh, we often will say, you know, measure measure three times, measure twice, cut once, uh, especially when it comes to our paper. If we don't measure right, we got to find another piece of paper. Uh, so that's another similarity. And I think we've got a few little hacks and shortcuts that we like to use in scrapbooking, just like, uh, you know, carpenters might use a, a jig to help them make the same cut over and over again, or, uh, you know, you might make a template to make sure you get the drawer pull or drawer handle in the exact same place on all your drawers. You know, there's those special tools, you know, to contour around a corner or molding so that you can cut just right. All kinds of little hacks and tools and templates that we can use in construction. And we've got the same kind of things in scrapbooking. So we're going to talk about that today. A couple of ideas for kind of DIY hacks 
when it comes to our scrapbook pages. Okay. Uh, seeing lots more gals, people are saying, I made it. Hello. Thank you so much for your kind words. I always really appreciate it. Uh, someone's saying that they are so glad they got all the new organizers. Yeah, if you've been spending some time this week based on our uh, time together last week, uh, tweaking your organizational systems. Let me know how it's going in the comments. We'd love to hear how it's going for you. And if you've made any, you know, new sort of systems that seem to be working for you, if you've had any aha moments, or if, you've, if you're using any of our new organizational products in new and different ways. Okay, so definitely put those in the comments while I'm showing you this amazing new uh, riveting collection. So let me switch you over. My eyes are watering like crazy. So give me a second here to dab those up while you have a look at the riveting collection. Uh, this has been a really popular uh, request. We get a lot of requests for construction theme, DIY, home building, home improvement. And so we're really thrilled to offer this. Uh, as I'm finding working in product development, it takes a long time to get these collections going. So if, even if we decided last year to do a home improvement collection, you know, it takes that long of a time to design it, to have it manufactured, to have it shipped. So we're definitely working uh, a long ways out. So this has been in the works for a while. Thank you for all of your continued product suggestions. And we're really, really thrilled that we can continue to bring you the things that you are asking for. So I have to start with this gorgeous album because this album I think is one of the most unique that we've ever done. I love this sort of wood grain background. Now it is foiled onto the book cloth. It's not an actual texture or embossing, but doesn't it look like wood grain? It's just stunning. And then we've got, of course, all of the fun little tools. We've got navy, gold, and silver foil down here. So if you've been doing some home renovations, if you've got a big uh, you know, a project that you've been documenting, or maybe it's just an ongoing thing. Maybe you've bought an old house and you're fixing it up over the years. This is the type of album that would be perfect to document all of that in. And then we've got the uh, collection itself. You can see that the papers all have fantastic uh, colors that are gonna work great for renovations and really feature a lot of icons that are going to be really versatile. So we've got these fun tools, nuts and bolts, uh, pegboard, some great stripes. There's those blueprints we were talking about earlier and even some measuring tape or rulers. And then we've got lots of great coordinating um, solids or tonals on the back, crumpled, you know, um, brown paper. Again, those hex nuts, wood grain in a couple of different shades, a plaid just because, you know, plaids are always great. And that's a great sort of accent for some of these wonderful colors. And then we've got this sort of stone or cement looking paper as well. So great colors, great icons. And you can see right on your sheet, Hot fudge, dark green, navy, blue, and platinum shimmer would be great coordinating cardstock. And uh, then we've got the stickers, of course. Look at all those fun stickers. I like these ones, you know, ouch, and what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> you know, all of those things that go wrong, sometimes we get, uh, we document as well. And then some really fun borders, paint and measuring tapes and kind of those construction borders. Uh, and of course, matte cards. I'm gonna be talking about the matte cards um, a little bit more because I'm gonna rely on a couple of them. And then in the embellishment pack, we have super fun, um, super fun little photo corners. One got stuck in there, but you can see we've got some fun little photo corners that look like rulers, lots and lots of titles, and then construction. I love the, um, the tool chest there. I can fix anything, love that. Uh, we've got some great little journal spots in here as well, journaling tags, all kinds of fun stuff that you're gonna really, really have fun with. Handy dandy. Of course, we've got a couple of different versions of befores and afters. And then uh, one of the things I really like about this collection is the enamels. 
the little embellishment enamel. So these are self-adhesive. They look like enamels. They're kind of a, a textured, um, not textured, they're kind of a flexible uh, plastic with self-adhesive on the back. And all of these look like little screw heads, nuts and bolts, that kind of thing. So they're the perfect finishing touch. So a really, really fun and cute collection. And it's going to be great for, you know, anybody who does DIYs. And again, even if you don't have necessarily, you know, these particular colors, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And I think you're going to find that these are going to work really well for a lot of different things. But the first hack that we're going to talk about is using a template. And in this case, we're talking about an actual template. And when wherever CM's concerned about templates, we call them recipe templates. And they are thin mylar. They kind of look like stencils, but you can use them as stencils or you can use them as placement guides. You can use them as idea starters, or you can actually physically trace the shapes and then cut them out to reassemble. So the templates are really versatile. And I know some people will look at them and say, well, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to make a bunch of layouts that look exactly the same. So let me just show you a couple of things about this particular template that I think you will enjoy. First of all, basically we've got four photo spots. So you can really change up um, the orientation. You can get two vertical, two horizontal. But you could also put smaller photos into those spots. So you know how I love my little... Uh, my little cutout pieces here, but you could put a couple of three by four pieces or photos into these spots instead of six by fours. Okay, so really there's room for two six by fours in these larger spaces. Let me grab a couple six by fours here. Okay, so there's room for a couple of six by fours, and then these ones are measuring three and a half by five and a half. Okay, so but you can again choose which of those that you want to use and as you'll see in a minute I only have a couple of photos that I'm going to use so I'm going to actually replace a couple of these with some map packs. So that's the first way that it's versatile. The second way that it's versatile is of course that you can turn it and flip it. So you can use the idea here maybe this is your before and this is your after if you've got vertical pictures, this could be the before and after. And of course, you can either flip it over to have, you know, the before and afters going the opposite way. So don't forget to rotate your templates to see all of the different variations. And then also flip it over. Because in this case, you're going to get four more sort of variations and uh, arrangements. And then, as I mentioned, the third way that it's versatile is, again, that you can use it as a sort of placement guide. And I could just come in here and say, okay, I like the way that this is arranged. So I'm just going to use it as a guide. I'm going to put my photos here on a piece of paper. And, you know, that's going to be great. I, I, I'm pretty much done. I've used it as a, a kind of a guide to just locate my, my photos. I can take it off, you know, organize them back a little bit more, and I can see how that looks. So I can use it kind of as an idea or a, as, an, as a guide instead of always thinking that I have to cut and trace each and every space inside here. So I can use it as a guide. I can use it as a stencil in some cases. And that's what we're going to do with these little holes. And if you saw the uh, materials list for today, I'm going to be playing with one of the metallic dot tip pens. I've got the silver out, but you can use the gold as well. And we're actually going to be creating some of our little dots or pegboard holes which is kind of what the idea or intention was for these, but we're gonna be just stenciling them, okay? But you can also, of course, punch out your holes, uh, your little quarter inch circles with the hole punch and then actually adhere them onto your layout. So again, you've got different kinds of versatility within this one template. So don't let, you know, how it's shown uh, online or in the catalog or even on the title page, um, 
you know, kind of dissuade you from thinking that they're versatile because you can use them with a lot of different uh, or in a lot of different applications. And again, I'm going to use it in one way. You might have a completely different way. And then even on the sheet here, it shows you a couple of different ways to use it. Okay, so let's get into how I'm going to use it. Um, first of all, I want you to not be afraid of measuring because that is a really integral component of construction and DIY. And it's also a big component of scrapbooking. But you don't have to be a math whiz. You just have to know 12. And all of it's kind of, you know, um, oh, math teachers help me. Denominators or components? I think it's denominators. Like 1, 6, 2, uh, or 1, 12. Two and six, three and four, right? All of those kind of denominators of 12. So I've got a couple of photos here. And when I look at these, this is actually um, my husband and I's first house that we ever built way back in 2002. Uh, we've got the empty lot here, and then we've got the finished or almost finished home. Um, <laughs> And when I looked at these photos, actually, they are such bad quality. I'm surprised they even came out as good as this. Um, but I'm going to, you know, just kind of play around and I'm going to kind of see what what way it might make sense. And I'm kind of thinking this way might make sense. So I'm going to, you know, just kind of play around with that. So I think that's the way I want to organize it. Um, I don't necessarily want to cut out all of these pieces. So that's where I'm going to do some measuring. And as I mentioned, I only have the two photos. So this is where I'm also going to um, bring in some cards, the variety map pack cards. Uh, and these are great because again, they're going to work in whichever orientation you want. So if you had this turned and you needed horizontal cards, you've got them. I've got horizontal pictures, so I need vertical cards. So I just flip them over and I've got them. Okay. So I think this will work. Maybe now that I see this, maybe I'm going to just do a little, do a little change here. Maybe I'm going to flip that over and that might work well there. That might work well there. And then I can do the arrow from the before to the after. So I think actually I'm gonna do it in that orientation. But again, I don't necessarily need to put this underneath and trace it and cut it out. I can use measurements and our tools to get the same results. So I'm just gonna measure this and I'm pretty sure that it is three and a half by five and a half. So yeah, let's just get out our trimmer and make quick work out of it, right? We can rely on our tools to help us out. So if I've got to go to three and a half, I'm going to take a quarter inch off each side. That still gives me a great, uh, you know, design in the middle for my title. And then this was a six, so again, a quarter and one more to make it five and a half. So that's much quicker, oops. That's much quicker than, you know, tracing and cutting. These are gonna be fine. We're gonna talk about these frames in a minute. I'm gonna to have to do the same with this one. So let's just get that down really quick. I still have lots of room for journaling if I take it down to three and a half by five and a half. Again, quarter inch off each side to keep that design centered in the middle. Now this is the kind of math I can do, right? <laughs> that's the easy math to do. A scrapbooker's math is easy math. Okay, so that's that. Now, I mentioned that I'm not going to trace and cut or punch all of these circles. I'm going to use my pen, so I'm going to adhere things down. But I do need to do a couple other things. I need this arrow, and then I need these little frames. Now, I could do without the frames, but they really are quite fun. So let's measure them and see if we can kind of create a hack to create these little frame pieces. So each of these little mitered frames around the side 
is a half inch. So now I've gone ahead and cut a bunch of them so that I can do it quickly for you. But I've also got just a little half inch strip here. And the easiest way I've found to create these is to take a half inch strip and then we're going to come back and rely on our 45 degree inch line. So I'm just going to put the long side of my strip against the 45 degree line and I'm going to put this top corner right on my cutting line. And I know it's a small little strip, so it might be a little hard to see or for me to hold down. My fingers might get in the way. But basically I'm just going to create that first little 45 degree cut. So I don't have to necessarily go ahead and trace it. I do find, however, that instead of measuring and trying to get you know, my length correct, once I have that nice little 45 degree, I can just hold it in place, take my pencil, and just kind of butt up against the edge, and then that's an easy trim either with my trimmer or with my micro tip scissors. Okay, so that's the process I followed to get all of my little frame pieces. And those are going to come together nicely. I find that using the recipe templates, I love sort of using it to organize my, my uh, layout. The, the part that takes me the longest is taking the pieces off taking the recipe template off and kind of rearranging everything in the right spot. Okay, so that's the little frames. Those are gonna look great because again, the dark hot fudge paper is gonna show through those little edges. And then I need the arrow as well. So now this is the tricky bit. I thought that maybe I would like um, some red because our house was red uh, and we've got a little bit of red there. But there wasn't a lot of red paper in the riveting. It definitely is an accent color in some of the embellishments and some of the patterns, but there's no real red paper. So again, totally tonals to the rescue. Anytime I'm thinking that I need a certain color of paper, um, I go to, for my totally tonals and see if I've got something that'll work. And this is a scrap piece I had from the totally tonals red. Okay, so you can see that it's got these fun little lines. It's kind of got the lighter red, brighter red of the heart, and then the darker red kind of cranberry color of our house. So all I'm going to do there is trace this. I'm going to have to get it underneath to trace. And I just like to line up one edge of my paper with the edge of the shape. That leaves me one less piece to trace. Okay, so that would be how I would trace it. I know you probably won't be able to see that on camera. So I have to say that I did already do another, um, another one, but I traced it on the wrong side actually. So you're gonna have to imagine that that one is the right side. And I'm gonna cut this one out later off camera. Okay, so those are all my pieces together. And all I really need to do is adhere them, but I also wanted to show you how easy it is to create all those fun little dots with the um, dot tip metallic, silver metallic dot tip pen. Now, someone who was asking there about um, the difference between dual tip pens and dot tip pens. So let me just show you really quick. So first of all, the black barrel pens indicate our regular dual tip. And if you can see, there's kind of a little bit of a ribbed texture. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up. A little ribbed texture on one end. And that's my sort of little physical cue that that is the fine tip pen end, okay? So fine tip, good for writing. Although any of the metallic pens are going to be a little thicker just because of the metallic ink than the dual tip on say a colored pen. So let me just show you the difference there. Okay, so you can see that they are a little bit different. The metallic ink is always going to be a little bit um, of a thicker nib just because of the way the metallic ink flows out of the barrel. All right, 
And then the opposite side on the dual tips is the bullet tip, okay? So it's a thicker nib, but it still is, uh, you know, decent to write with and all of that. So that's the dual tip pens. The difference with a dot tip pen, first of all, I love the word juicy as a way to describe this because on where instead of a bold tip or a bullet tip, you have this chunky little circular tip. And we call it a dot tip because you can actually make dots of varying sizes. So let me get just a scrap, a scrap of black here. Hang on, there we go. And you can see that if I press down, I can make quite a large dot. But if I just, you know, kind of tap it, I just make small dots. And I can vary the size of the dot by how much I press down and somewhat how long I actually leave my pen in one place. So these are great for adding, you know, details to your layout. And in this case, we're going to go around and we're just going to fill in all of our dots. Now, how fast and easy is that? Now, as I mentioned, you could go ahead and take some scrap paper or paper in whatever color you want and uh, punch out a, a bunch of the little holes with the quarter inch, the single hole handheld hole punch. Um, and then when you lift off this template, you could go ahead and place all of those little dots in all of the right spaces. But this is fun. <laughs> it's really fun to do all of the little dots. You just kind of have to make sure you've got a little bit of repositionable adhesive on your template itself to hold it in place. And ideally, you would have adhered all of these other pieces so they're not going to move around. The other thing about this is metallic ink does sometimes smear if you don't let it dry. I've never had a problem with our regular ink smearing if I'm doing a journal entry, for example. I can almost, you know... If I've written or drawn my lines with pencil first, then I can pretty much go ahead and erase those pencil lines right away, right afterwards. But the metallic ink, again, just due to the formulation, due to the way it, you know, the metallic nature of it, uh, it does smear a little bit. So you're going to want to wait and don't touch that. Don't move the template. Don't, you know, move it back and forth or even try to lift it off for a few minutes. Okay, so we're just going to leave that for a couple of minutes. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you about using any of the inks, whether they're the dot tip or regular dual tip, whether they're metallic or our regular ink, you can definitely use them with the Mylar templates. Okay, but I would just suggest having a wet paper towel a wet wipe, uh, a microfiber cloth, anything like that, so that you can just wipe off any extra ink once you pull it off your, um, once you pull it off your, your template there. Now, the other thing is, is right here where the Creative Memories logo is, I'm gonna have to go back and add some dots there a little bit later. But while we're waiting, let's just adhere these really quick. And again, I might have to, actually, I might have to wait on some of these because it sort of has to go under the template. Maybe I can adhere some of my smaller pieces. I'm just gonna use some repositionable to get these little frame pieces in place. And then it should be quite easy to get my photos laid down afterwards. And by the time I finish this, I'm sure the ink will have dried and we can do the big reveal. Okay, so that is uh, kind of, again, our first sort of DIY hack using a template. But what if you have more photos? 
Well, we all know about sketches, but I'm going to show you kind of another take on the sketch, another take on a blueprint to, um, to use for a starting point. So let me finish off. I just got two more to do. I know it's not very exciting watching me adhere things, but in this case, if I lift it up, everything's going to go flying. So I might as well adhere what I can while I'm waiting. I think I've got one more and then I should be good. Okay, let's try to lift this off gently. And I'm just going to grab my anywhere that's sort of not the dots. I've got a little bit of adhesive there, not much. But yeah, that's going to look so awesome. So we've really created that, um, you know, that easy template as because of our little hack, right? So anytime we can look for a hack that can make our lives easier, I say go for it. All right, let me get, oh, I already had adhesive on here. Let's get this in the middle here. I love the way that looks with kind of the mitered corners. And again, I know it looks intimidating because who wants to punch out all of those and, you know, glue them on? But it's really quite easy to go in with the dot tip pens. Now, currently we only have the silver and gold dot tip pens. But if you have any of our other colors that we've had, that we've offered in the past, of course you can use this with any, um, any you know, different kind of collection. This would be especially great for, um, you know, some kind of, like this almost reminds me of like a marquee. So it would be great with Showtime. It would be great to document something, you know, where there's... Um, you know, something happening, uh, a show, something like that. And as I said, I need to cut out the arrow that I traced, but that's going to go just right in like that. And then I'm just going to line up again, use it like a stencil. And I'm just going to line up a couple of the dots there and fill in those last three. You gonna be careful. There we go. Um, fill in those last three from where the logo was. Now, as I mentioned, you can see that you've got a little bit of ink right around those dots. So let me grab a wipe and clean that up just before it completely sets. So you can see a little bit will come off. Okay, so really easy to use and reuse, really easy to clean up if you do decide to use it like a stencil. And I kind of challenge you to go back for some of your other recipe templates and see if there's any other places you can use them like a stencil. Okay, so I'll finish cleaning that off. But yeah, you can see that if you put that away, you would have a little bit of ink smearing around. Okay. So apart from this being wrong, I think that looks great. I can uh, go back in and have, um, you know, look for a title option if I want it, some other embellishments, etc. But I've got my before and after that I could add on and then journaling about our construction process. Okay, so somebody else is saying uh, they would hole punch the brown paper and then add a thin strip of colored paper underneath for a different look. And I do want to tell you that I tried that because what I thought is if I had my recipe template lined up and then I took my hole punch and went into each of the holes, I could punch right through and keep the, the kind of the arrangement. But I do want to say that although it is a quarter inch hole, there, it, it, it does take a lot of punching because the little edges of the hole punch kind of get stuck on the edges of the Mylar template. So I think you could definitely go around and punch out, but you may want to make a little mark first before you start punching, just so you have a nice regular spacing. The other thing is, is these ones in here, um, if you wanted to cut out the space 
for your photos, uh, then you could get in and punch. But otherwise, unless you have a, a one of those really long hole punches, you're not going to be able to get in there to punch. But around the edges, for sure, that's a great way to create those holes. All right, but let's talk about DIY hack number two. So remember I said that I only had a couple of photos and the, the um, recipe template worked perfectly. But here I've got, you know, quite a few photos from a kitchen renovation. You know, all the Ikea boxes, the demolition, you know, how it looks, and then hubby, you know, kind of christening it and, and cooking our first meal in there. So I've got a lot of photos here and that's not going to work in that template. So I have to figure out another way. I could definitely go to some of my virtual crop sketches. I could go to even my, you know, if I have one of the 101 or 110 scrapbook sketchbooks, I could definitely do that. But one of the things that I actually really love the idea of is using the design of the simple page kit as a blueprint or as a plan for another layout. Now, you might have remembered me saying that when I first talked to you about the simple page kits when we introduced them at the beginning of January. Of course, the simple page kits, for those of you who don't know, they come with the two base pages. Okay, and then they come with another sheet that might look a little bit strange, but when you flip it over, it has all of the numbered components. So all you need to do is cut along the cutting lines and then you have all of the pieces and then you just follow the picture. You just follow the little plan here. So this would be number one. You can see where number one goes, number two, etc. So if you have piece of paper obviously you can measure because remember we talked about measuring can't get by too far without it but basically you know we've got some four by six photo mats we've got some four by four photo mats and then we've got some four by two little extras these are the journal box and the little background for the title so I could easily take those measurements and cut out other pieces I can also look at the measurements of the decorative elements on the page prints. So for example, at the top, we've got one inch striped borders all across the top, top and bottom. And then here, I've got a three inch by 12 inch border or strip. And same over here, three inch by 12 inch strip. So knowing that, I can easily use this as a blueprint or a plan for a layout. So even if you, um, you know, create this and use it for a Valentine's layout, a love layout, don't reinvent the wheel. If you love the way that this particular, where'd my sheet go? If you love the way that this particular layout looks, why not replicate it? And the way I think about that in conjunction with construction or DIY is that when you, you walk into, you know, a show home, for example, and you're looking around and you say, I love this floor plan. I want to make some tweaks, right? They don't create a brand new floor plan for every single house they build. They take that basic floor plan and they make some tweaks. So that's what we can do with any layout. It just so happens that the simple page kit is an easy one to replicate because we can very clearly see the shapes and sizes of, of the pieces. So let's replicate it. Let's do this. I've got two pieces of paper. This is the one that kind of looks like the crumpled up brown paper. So I'm just going to put those down here on my two 13 by 13 inch cutting mats. And I like working on these because I can line up everything nice and evenly. And my papers don't move around. So there's my base pages. And here's just a quick little tip. Anytime I'm using two of the same pattern papers, I really think about, do I want them to be exactly the same or should I turn one, rotate it, for example, so that it creates a more interesting background. So if I had 
a paper that had, you know, a regular pattern, I probably would want to use them, you know, kind of, well, here's a good example. Here's the back side, right? Uh, I, I can use it either way, but you can see that if I do turn it, some of the hearts are going in different directions. So I would probably want to use those two identical base pages going the same way. Here with this texture, I love how having this sort of large crumpled area over here and then having that same large crumpled area opposite it. If I turned my paper and had it down like this, it doesn't really have the same effect. It kind of looks too matchy-matchy. It looks too much the same. So by just kind of rotating it, I actually create a more interesting background and I have a bit of directionality because I kind of have this almost like a zigzag going. So have a look at your papers before you actually put stuff on them. Okay, so um, we measured this and we've got some striped borders, one inch borders. So here I've got some striped borders that I cut from the striped paper in the riveting pack. Okay, so that looks good. And then I had those two three inch borders. One that's going across and just kind of double checking. Yeah, it's pretty much in the center. And then this one is one inch in from the edge. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got a couple of pieces of that fun pegboard. So let me get that in the center here first. Okay. And then one inch in from the edge. Okay. That's looking pretty good, right? Looking the same. All right, and now I can bring in my photos. Now I also do notice that on my little sheet, my little insert, I've got some border stickers on here. And those come, that sticker sheet comes with the simple page kit, right? So there's my two border stickers. So I, I did have a quick look, where did I put my stickers? I did have a quick look at the border stickers from the riveting collection. and. I didn't think any of them, of them really went with the theme that I was kind of working with here. So I decided that I would use the new hand tools. Let me grab it so I know I'm saying the right thing. Hand tools, decorative border punch. So all I did was punch a strip from the gray and I mounted it onto a piece of the darker brown. So let's go ahead and do that. If you've never used one of our border punches, really, really easy to use. These are standalone. You don't need anything else. So you just unlock them there at the back so that it enables the punch mechanism. And then you're going to want to see the two lines on the front of the punch. You can start your paper at either side. If you start with your paper at this side, then you're going to feed it through that way. If you start your paper here, you're going to feed it through that way. So it's kind of opposite. So I like to start my paper from this direction and move to the left. And it's hard to show, but I'm going to line up the edge of my paper with the uh, line over on this side. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to make a mess, but we'll put everything back together. And then once my paper is lined up there, I'm going to use my right hand to hold it very firmly against that little back lip. Go ahead and punch. And then I'm going to move it along until the punched out shapes match the shapes that are printed on the base plate. So you can see that there's a wrench and a screwdriver printed there. I'm going to move it along until the wrench and the screwdriver are right over top and I don't see any more blue. That's how I know that it's in the exact right spot. So I just keep moving. Basically, I don't want to see any blue. I just want to see silver. And we're just going to keep punching. Now you can see that it's punching the edge of this gray paper. So again, we got to rely a bit on our construction slash scrapbooking math. Oh, I did. That's enough. Um, 
And look at all these fun little tools I've got. So I can use all of these little punched out tools. There's my little hammers, screwdrivers, wrenches, and my pliers. They're not very big, but they are really cute. So make sure you hang on to those. Okay, so now because we're gonna have to trim this off, we gotta use our measurements again. And basically, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hack here. When you look at the back side of the punch, again, get out your trusty, uh, your trusty uh, ruler here. When you look, you're going to see how wide or how tall, I guess this is height, this is width. You're gonna see how tall the punch is. So we're looking at not quite one and three quarter inches. But if I trim my edge punched piece to that one and three quarter inches, it's going to look pretty much like it's in the middle. So I can go ahead and do that. Of course, I'll have a look on my trimmer here, but if I, line up the top edge with one and three quarters. You can see that that looks pretty good. Because on my punch it was just like a notch under, I'm just gonna move it back one. But that's just a little hack you can use to see how it looks. All right, so there's my second punched border. I'm gonna line that up, and of course I'll adhere everything down. But yeah, that is looking pretty much identical to my base pages that I had from my Simple Page Kit, okay? So yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. Use your, you know, existing layouts, your existing, you know, tried and trues to create a layout that you love. All right, and so now I can come in and I've uh, used the same recommended photo sizes even that were on the page kit. So you can see that the cut apart sheet actually was um, all of the mats for the photos. So you can see that when you cut apart the pieces, they become the mats for the photos. So I've gone ahead and just matted my photos onto some white, but here's basically my same organization or orientation of all of my photos. And I'm just allowing a little bit more space in between um, so that I can see that cute border. The um, sticker border would have been a little bit skinnier. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And then I have one over here. And again, I'm just following, sorry, I should have said, I'm just following the placement on the picture. And I'm just going to scooch it over just a little bit just because I want to see just a little bit more of that border. Okay, but that's pretty much the same uh, organization or orientation as the simple page kit number two. Now you can mirror it, right? I could have put, if my photos worked, I could have put the one border over here and then this border on this side. So again, making those tweaks, think of it just like a, um, a house plan, right? If you don't want your linen closet in that spot, where else could you put it? If in the case of scrapbooking, if you don't want your photo in that spot or your border in that spot, where can you put it? So feel free to tweak any of the sketches, plans, or layouts that you've already made or that you see um, you know, on the blog or online or anything like that. Okay. So that is another fun hack that I want you to keep in mind. Don't try to reinvent and create a brand new floor plan. Use the floor plan that exists and make the tweaks. Somebody's asking about this uh, ruler. It does say creative memories on it. This is really old. This is my, you know, it's been at my side now for probably the last 10, 12 years. So no, this is not available online. We do have our zero centering ruler available currently. So that's definitely a great ruler to have. Okay. So no matter which way you want to do your templates, your hacks, I hope that I've given you a couple of ideas today on how to make those shortcuts, how to work smarter, not harder, how to use our tools, how to, you know, really, um, Think about constructing 
and using all of those little hacks and tweaks that uh, that I've been sharing and talking about. So that was that was fun to think about it in that way. I love a good analogy. My husband is the master of analogies. So he kind of helped me there. But yeah, think about it in terms of scrapbooking is very much like construction and all of the things that we do and all of the things that we can learn from, you know, master carpenters who use certain tools in certain ways or, you know, learning um, how to, uh, you know, use your, your tools properly, right? You've always heard, you've all heard the saying about, you know, a carpenter is only as good as his tools or something along those lines. But yeah, we have these great creative memories tools, but if we don't know how to use them, if we don't know how to use them properly, or if we're using them, you know, maybe not in the way they were intended, we may not get the same results. We may not get that finished product that looks the way we want. So a bunch of analogies there. I hope that kind of helps in your brain when you are thinking about some hacks, some DIY hacks uh, for your scrapbooking. So that was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see if you guys try some of those hacks. And again, if you were worried about recipe templates, don't be. Think about them as a tool. Think about them in, as a guide, an idea, a starting place, and then look at your recipe templates and think, how can I make this um, more versatile? How can I use it in a different way? How can I cut down the time that I might want to spend with it? What are some simple and smart ways that I can use them? Okay. And then, as I said, the, um, you know, not reinventing the wheel when it comes to your pages, look at other things you've created and make those tweaks, change them up. Okay. Someone's saying they love their templates. Oh, I'm good. I'm glad. I have them, of them all, I think. Or I, I'm missing a few, but um, there's certainly ones that I go back to a lot. And I love I love my pens. Um, I was an art teacher in my former life sort of thing. And so color and, you know, mixed media, painting, pens, all of that stuff really appeals to me. And I love using my templates as stencils. So there's a few that lend themselves more to that than others. But that's what... That's one really fun thing I love to do with my templates. Okay, I'm glad you're excited to try some of these. I can't wait to see them. Uh, again, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if anybody put their organizing hacks or tweaks in the comments as well. So I'll be looking back through those later on tonight. Uh, a few reminders. So we've got the riveting Buy It All bundle on. And I just want to remind you about Buy It All bundles. If you loved everything that you saw, um, you know, the paper, the decorative elements, the stickers, the embellishments, the tools, like the handheld... Um, hole punch and the hand tools, both, both have the word hand in them, and the hand tools border punch. Those are all included in the decorative uh, buy it all bundle, sorry, not the decorative bundle, the buy it all bundle. And the great thing about the buy it all bundle is it's one click ordering plus it's 10% off when you purchase it within 10 days of launching. So the riveting buy it all bundle, I'm just looking down here, with the 10% discount ends on Friday. So you still have a couple of days to grab that. Okay. Um, and you'll also want to go into whether you buy the bundle or not, you want to go on to the CM website, look where it says buy it all bundle. And in the description of what's in the buy it all bundle, that's where you're going to find the link to download the decorative ideas flyer. So you want to do that for every single collection. So you'll find that in the description of the buy it all bundle. Now, I also want to mention that the This Life Buy It All Bundle, it should have ended 10 days after launch. But because it's going to be one of our basic collections, we're going to be referring to it and coming back to it and refreshing it and bringing out products that coordinate with it all year long, we've extended the um, Buy It All Bundle pricing on this life buy it all bundle so that's still up there i think it's on until february 23rd so make sure you take advantage of that and then the last thing i want to point out if you did not see it this past monday secret box number one went on sale the first of four for 2024 and i'm really excited about this one i 
you don't want to miss this one. Honest to goodness, I, I, I know that I say all of them are my favorites. And, you know, it's like children. You can't really play favorites. But truly, this one is absolutely gorgeous. And we are going to have so much fun creating some layouts and some other fun things with the contents of Secret Box number one. So you definitely want to get it. Uh, order it now. It is also on for 10% off the value of the product. So it's not a timed discount like the buy it all bundles but basically if the products were you know fifty dollars retail value the price of the secret box would be uh ten percent less so forty five dollars so you can see in your uh market your creative memories website for your market what the price is but know that 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 discount is already built into the price so you're getting a, a bigger value for a smaller price exclusive products that you don't want to miss. Oh my gosh, and I'm having so much fun creating the um, the layouts and things like that for you. So you're gonna wanna order that, maybe order the riveting bundle, the This Life bundle, whatever you need, and get that soon because we are gonna open the secret box number one together during or just before the February virtual crop. So we're gonna open it together 4.45 p.m. Friday, February 9th, and then the virtual crop will kick off at 5 o'clock p.m., and that's central time, central time zone, okay? So, and at that time, you're going to see, obviously, the contents of the box, but you'll also get access to the tutorial, uh, tutorial video, and a project booklet download so that you can use all the beautiful products. I'm going to show you how to use some of them. We're going to create a little something together in those first few minutes, and then you'll have the entire weekend to play with your secret box and also work on your virtual crop sketches. Okay, so those are the three things I wanted to remind you about riveting buy it all bundle, this life buy it all bundle and the secret box. Okay, so happy shopping if you need to get any of those. Okay, I think that is it. Looking at my list there. I think I've covered it all. I had a great time DIYing with you. And again, that analogy of construction and DIY, I hope that helps you think of some fun hacks and easy uh, sort of, you know, workarounds or shortcuts for your scrapbooking. So share those with us. Share your layouts with us, of course, in the virtual crop group. We love seeing them. And I will see you next week. Now, what are we going to do next week? Well, you never know. Right? We always have fun. We always do something fast. We always make a project. Uh, we probably will do have, have a new adventure next week. All right? So I hope you can join me. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Wednesday, January 31st at 5 p.m. Central Time, right here in the Virtual Crop Facebook group and on the YouTube channel. All right? Thanks again for joining me, everybody. Have a great week. We'll